I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're going to learn something today. Today, we're going to update the firmware on our rapid fire module, and I'll show you how to do a custom splash screen. If you don't own a rapid fire module, I'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> At the beginning of this video, I joked, if you don't own a rapid fire module, I'll see you tomorrow. And to be honest with you, the number of people who don't own a rapid fire module is shrinking. Everywhere I go, race events, freestyle events, Rotor Riot Rampage, I just see so many of this red module cover. Everybody's mad when Immersion RC refused to release it in any color except red, at least in the beginning. You can actually get an aftermarket white uh, module cover now, by the way. Uh, but I got to say, from a marketing perspective, I think it was brilliant because everywhere you go, you're just like, oh, rapid fire, rapid fire, rapid fire, rapid fire. And uh, and with good reason. I was a little bit skeptical of rapid fire's performance just because there's so much the hype is real, right? And placebo is real. People buy a product and then they say, oh, it's better. But how do you prove it? And a couple months ago, I did a massive blind test where I recorded two goggles at the same time and I showed them to people and asked them to pick which was better without telling them which one it was. And you can see the results of this test here on my website. I'll put the link down in the video description. You can watch the original videos if you want to try to guess. Uh, but the bottom line is that Rapid Fire consistently beat every module that went up against it. So although Rapid Fire is the most expensive of the modules tested well, the Clearview is more expensive, but uh, anyway, Rapid Fire is pretty expensive compared to things like an Owl RC or a, a True D or a LaForge. It does seem to deliver better performance. So maybe they've earned their popularity. But Rapid Fire is not without its quirks, especially in the beginning that it had shall we say, issues with some cameras and flight controllers where it would lose sync, the image would roll or scroll sideways, or just range would be bad. And this was a real problem. I'm happy to say, though, that Immersion RC has been updating, f releasing firmware updates for Rapid Fire like crazy. And the current firmware is better than it's ever been. Is it perfect? I still find occasionally cameras or flight controllers that it has issues with. Most prominently recently, the Mobulus 7 for me. Well, every flight I have with the Mobulus 7, if I'm in rapid fire mode number one, which is the original and the highest performance rapid fire mode, I get this kind of rolling black image and then it recovers. But I just have to remember to change my rapid fire from rapid fire mode one to standard, what they call it legacy mode. You can get there in the rapid fire menu before I fly my Mobula. And Again, to their credit, Immersion RC has, uh, Tony Cake from Immersion RC has said, really, guys? Okay, I guess I have to buy a Mobula and figure out what's going on here. Hopefully, there'll be a fix for that. So if you are not running the latest Rapid Fire firmware, I strongly suggest that you go ahead and update. And it's not just flight performance that they've improved, but they've improved the usability too. They've added the ability to see the channels in your band and the signal strength on the channels in the Goggle OSD. This is something that, well, going way back when, Flying Lemon did this way back when on their module, uh, but uh, more prominently recently, LaForge V4 did this feature, and actually LaForge V4 went further by putting the entire Goggle menu in the OSD. Not something that uh, Rapid Fire has done, but still, the minimum thing I'd like to see is the ability to have the, uh, the channels and RSSI to get on the channel that you need. Okay, so here is how you update the firmware. And the first thing you're going to need to do is go to the Rapid Fire page. We're going to need to go and get the updater. And it's going to be in the firmware slash download section. And we're going to download Rapid Fire Updater. They have added in response to requests from you guys a Mac OS and a Linux version. There used to be a Windows version only, so you can do that if you are on one of those operating systems. We'll go ahead and install the updater. And when we run the rapid fire updater, here we are. Now, one thing you may want to play with if you're getting ready to update your firmware is a custom splash screen. And basically you just need a 128 by 64 pixel black and white image 
if you know how to do that, that's great. If not, maybe that'll be a topic for another video, but you would do load bitmap, you would pick the image, and then it, when you flash, you'll have that as your splash screen. So that's kind of cool. So we're gonna remove the module from the goggles, and before you plug it in, you're gonna to need to install the Immersion RC drivers. And where could you possibly get those? You can get them from right here. These are the drivers. I think I put it in my downloads file. Yeah, IRC drivers, WinX x86 x64.zip. That's a zip file. And you're gonna install those the same as you install any Oh my God. There's so much bump, bumping and bouncing. And I'm gonna install them. And let's see, I'm on Windows, a 64-bit version of Windows, so I'm gonna use the X64 installer. If you're on a 32-bit version of Windows, you'll use the, uh, and they're already installed. You, if, if you're on a 32-bit version of Windows, which few of you probably are, you'll use the X86 installer. Anyway, the drivers are installed. Then I'm going to hold down the button, hold down the joystick button, and while holding it down, I'm going to plug in the USB. That's how you put it into bootloader mode. And when you do that, it should detect the COM port, and you'll just select your firmware that you want to flash. Are there any betas? Ooh, beta 124. Well, why not? Let's be brave. <laughs> and flash firmware. And when you see rapid fire upgrade completed, you're done. Congratulations, you've updated the firmware on your rapid fire module. And if you hadn't done this already, enjoy the new OSD. Uh, just change channels without taking the goggles off your face. Uh, you can also see if you get better performance, uh, if you've been having any issues with rolling image or anything, this should really improve that. Thanks for watching, happy flying. Hey folks, while we're here, real quick, I wanna show you. So if I go into the menu, um, I can set the RF mode and rapid fire mode number one is the highest performance mode and it also has the advantage that you get the on-screen display. If you're having issues with rolling video or black screen, you can switch to rapid fire mode number two, which will reduce performance slightly but make the signal a little more stable. Or you can go to rapid, you can go to legacy, which is no rapid fire super unicorn magic. It's just simple diversity, uh, but it will be the most compatible with all cameras and flight controllers. If you're having issues like with my with my Mobula 7, for example, you can just run in legacy mode. One uh, disadvantage of rapid fire mode number two and legacy is that you do lose the on-screen display. So if you like having the RSSI bars at the top of the screen, and by the way, here is where you can set that in the OSD setting, you can choose what it shows at the top of the screen. Um, so if you've got like the RSSI bars or just the lock symbol, then uh, you're gonna lose that if you switch to rapid fire, if you switch away from rapid fire mode number one. But sometimes that's just what you gotta do in order to, uh, in order to get a stable signal. Less and less, but still sometimes. In the new firmware, you can also change the OSD position. So the safe position puts the OSD a little lower on the screen Damn it! <laughs> but the uh, the uh, top HDO and top HD two, you can try those, and those will move the o RS move the OSD a little higher on the screen. And depending on how much uh, overscan your goggle display has, you may be able to squeeze it up against the top of the screen and take up less of your real estate. I just run in safe mode because that's just what works the best for me. One last thing, you can also turn audio off. So this will reduce the amount of audio that you get coming into your DVR. If you fly without a microphone on your quad, then setting audio to off will cause the DVR not to have those pops and cracks. If you fly with a mic on your quad, set audio to on. All right, there you go. Back to the video.